And just before we bring you sport, 62 suspected political thugs have been arrested by the Niger State Police Command in connection with the violence that rocked the local government primaries conducted by the All Progressives Congress Saturday the 7th of September. Three persons were reportedly killed in Shiroro local government area. While in other local government areas, there were pockets of clashes among party supporters. The police say the suspects who were arrested from five local government areas were in possession of deadly weapons and substances suspected to be hard drugs. Two-time African champions aimed by international were this evening held to a goalless draw by Sudan's Al-Hilal in the first leg of the round of 16 of the CAF Champions League in Abba. Iemba failed to get the needed result in front of their fans even after Al-Hilal player Bazar Nasir was sent off after just 20 minutes for an off-the-ball incident. The former champions will be the team under pressure when they face Al-Hilal in Sudan next week to determine the team who will advance to the group stage of the CAF Champions League. The People's Elephant are the only Nigerian club left in, on the continent's biggest club competition after Kano Pillars were sent packing by Ashanti Kotoko of Ghana in the previous round. In the English Premier League, mistakes from Socrates and David Luiz saw Arsenal squander a two-goal lead as Watford earned a 2-2 draw in Kike Sanchez Flores' uh, first game back in charge at Vicarage Road. Now up here, Emmerich Aboumeyang looked to have steered Arsenal to victory after the Gabon international netted twice in 11 first half minutes to take his tally to five in five English Premier League games this season. But Arsenal came under heavy pressure in the second half and Watford pulled one back after a tumultuous pass from Socrates allowed Tom Cleverley a chance that he buried with a plum. David Luiz then considered a penalty nine minutes from time that substitute uh, Roberto Pereira uh, confidently converted. Earlier, Callum Wilson scored twice as Bournemouth ended a two-match losing run in the English Premier League by beating Everton 3-1 at the Vitality Stadium. Nigeria's permanent representative to the United Nations, Professor Tijani Mohamed Bande, is set to take office as President of the United Nations General Assembly tomorrow, September the 16th, in New York. Ceremonies to mark his assumption held at the UN headquarters uh, tomorrow and the 17th, the head of the UN General Assembly, to be attended by leaders of nations from around the world. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Geoffrey Nyema, will be heading the Nigerian delegation to the event, accompanied by the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency and the Senior Special Assistant on Media and Publicity, Mr. Garba Shehu. Professor Mohamed Bande was elected President of the 74th Session of the General Assembly by acclamation on Tuesday, June the 4th, to serve the one-year role with a strong mandate from his home government that nominated him and endorsed by the group of African states adopted unanimously also by the member states. His presidency of the Assembly comes 30 years after Nigeria's first opportunity to preside among his role for the implementation of existing mandates for the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with particular focus on peace and security, poverty eradication, zero hunger, quality education and others. South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has sent out special envoys to deliver messages of solidarity to several heads of state and government across Africa following attacks on their citizens. The team comprising of former minister in the presidency, Mr. Jeff Radebe, Ambassador Kingsley Mabolo and Dr. Kulu Mbatha, will visit Nigeria, Niger, Ghana, Senegal, Tanzania, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Zambia. The special envoys will deliver a message from President Ramaphosa regarding the incidents of violence that recently erupted in some parts of South Africa, which resulted in attacks on foreign nationals and the destruction of property. The special envoys are tasked with reassuring fellow African countries that South Africa is committed to the ideals of Pan-African unity and to the rule of law. They will also brief governments and the identified African countries about the steps that the South African government has taken to bring a stop to the attacks and hold the perpetrators to account. Protests in Hong Kong have taken a different turn today as police deployed water cannon and tear gas against the protesters who were throwing petrol bombs and bricks near government offices in the city. The violence broke out after thousands of protesters marched in defiance of a police ban. It's been a while since peaceful protests lasted in the city of Hong Kong. 
Though Sunday started peacefully, it quickly escalated to a showdown between the police and the protesters. Protesters tore down and set fire to a red banner proclaiming the October 1st anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China and thrashed subway stations, lit fires in the streets. Police responded with tear gas and water cannon. The cannon sprayed blue water, scattering the black-clad protesters who had marched through the city earlier in the day after gathering at the consulate, calling Britain to rein in China and ensure it respects the city's freedom. The spark for the protest was planned legislation, now withdrawn, that would have allowed people to be sent to mainland China for trial. But the protests have since broadened into calls for universal suffrage. France and Britain have condemned Saturday's attacks on Saudi oil plants in Al Qaeda and Kuris, said to have knocked out more than half the kingdom's oil output, which is roughly 5% of global oil supply. Britain's Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said on Twitter that this was a reckless attempt to damage regional security and disrupt global oil supplies. The UK condemned such behaviour unreservedly. The French Foreign Minister also tweeted a condemnation of the attacks, expressing complete solidarity with Saudi Arabia. Foreign Minister Javid Sarif said blaming Iran won't end the disaster in Yemen. And the main news again. The Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Babaka Malami, today said the Process and Industrial Developments Limited, PNID, case could have been handled differently by the previous administration of President Goodluck Jonathan, who he believes should have appealed the judgment. According to him, the federal government have very limited options left to explore regarding the case. And you heard South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has sent out special envoys to reassure heads of state and government across the continent with messages of solidarity following attacks on the nationals in South Africa. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching. I'm Millicent Walker. Have a great week ahead.